Hi class, Professor Cook here. I am back with part two of chapter eight, gender, sexuality, and sexual orientation. So let's pick up where we left off. Right before this slide, we were talking about the differences between gender identity, gender roles, and gender stereotypes. If you didn't see that yet, please review those concepts. Those will be important. This is a little mini quiz about those concepts, making sure that you understand the differences. If we were in class in person, um, we would take a minute here and watch this TED Talk and then discuss these issues about gender neutral bathrooms or about not segregating bathrooms based on gender. If you have time, I recommend it. I am not going to require you to do this because I added the Growing Up Trans video and discussion questions for this uh, unit, which I think is overall more comprehensive and um, more in line with the competencies we're trying to master in this particular chapter. But this is a really good uh, food for thought TED Talk, and it's very funny. Um, and I think what I liked about it, just to kind of give you a little spoiler alert if you want to watch it first and then come back, um, what I think is interesting that I hadn't necessarily considered before I saw this was how having gender-neutral bathrooms benefits people who have other identities that might be marginalized by uh, segregated gender bathrooms than people who are non-binary or transgender uh, or fluid or something like that. So it benefits people beyond the specific groups that it is intended to benefit. So that's often true with um, inclusion and diversity initiatives. I just wanted to sort of make that connection for you that what we see is when we do make efforts to be inclusive, uh, we, we generally end up benefiting a broader group of people than we might initially have intended. So inclusion might take some work, but it's helpful because it benefits people um, that we might not have considered and it makes things more accessible. Okay, moving on, I want to focus on shifting a bit into discussing um, gender inequality gender equality, gender inequality, and this will be really important for the exam, but before I get there, let me take a minute to uh, talk about feminism. So feminism is not anti-men, I just want to be clear about that. Unfortunately, I think some feminists are very extreme, just like some people of any kind of ideology, and it's those folks who get a lot of negative attention. So feminism is intended to be a consciousness-raising social movement that gets us to the point where we consider um, that women and men should have equal opportunity and respect and um, options for their lives, okay? So that's the, the definition here. It's not saying women are better. It's not saying we don't need men, okay? That, those are misconceptions, um, it's just trying to broaden this. And I just started watching this series on Hulu called Mrs. America, and it's fantastic. It's about the fight for the Equal Rights Amendment. So I don't know if you have time or, or at all space to consider that, but so far I'm two episodes in, and it's, it's very, very well done. It's really interesting because it talks about some of the tensions within second wave feminism and shows some of the arguments of the conservative response to feminism that I think were really important for understanding why the equal, equal rights movement was not ratified. Um, not that I agree with those arguments, but it's just a very well done series. Okay, moving on. Um, more about feminism here. What we are going to talk about specifically uh, with respect to gender stratification in more depth is the gender pay gap. Before I get there though, let me just help you with these definitions. Sexism here refers to discrimination based on sex. Um, we really should probably say gender here, um, but it's it's typically you know assumed superiority of the often around the world it's been the male over the female uh, sex or gender identity. Okay, sexism is the belief that discrimination is okay based on sex, so just like racism is based on race, sexism based on sex or gender. Gender stratification then is looking at unequal access to wealth, power, prestige, and status, and other resources based on gender identification, okay? 
gender stratification is that unequal access to wealth, power, prestige. We've talked about stratification based on class. We've talked about stratification based on race. And for the last uh, unit here, we're looking at gender and sexual orientation. I'm going to make a point about this later as well. But before I get there, I want to talk a bit in depth about the gender pay gap. The gender pay gap is the largest example of gender stratification we are going to focus on in this chapter, and I want to take some time to really go through it thoroughly and unpack it because it's often misunderstood and um, misrepresented in, in discussions about this in the media. Okay, technically, the gender pay gap is the difference between what men make in the U.S. versus what women make on average, okay? I'm going to say that again. The gender pay gap is a st statistical measure that compares overall salaries of women compared to men in the United States. Okay, so what that number is, we're going to cite this specific number. So this is what you want to remember for the uh, final exam. Women in the United States today make 81 cents for every dollar that men make. Women in the United States today make 81 cents for every dollar that men make. So there are a couple of important things to note about this statistic. The statistic about the gender pay gap is not a specific statistic. It does not take into account the variables that would affect how much money you make. Okay, so this is not comparing apples to apples, so to speak. In other words, we're not in this overall general number, we are not separating out how much people work and what their occupation is, okay? So we are not in this gross um, categorization looking at, say, teachers compared to teachers. We are looking at all men who work and all women who work. As we know, there are different amounts of pay for different kinds of jobs based on education, experience, what the market has decided people in that occupation should be paid, um, what else, uh, how much you work, right? However, what I can tell you about education and the pay gap is that as you get more education, counterintuitively, the pay gap gets worse. It increases. Okay, so we're going to talk about that in a minute, um, and we will we will really explore that. But before I get there, I want to talk about this graph. Hopefully you can see this. I know that the text is somewhat small, but I want to look at this in detail. And I want you to understand this because there will be questions about this on the final exam. Okay, so let me just preface this by saying, if that overall pay gap is 81 cents for every dollar between women and men's average pay, what happens What happens if we control now, if we include comparisons based on how much people work and what kind of job they do? So this data is a little more nuanced, okay? So what you've got here, the blue columns are how much men make in that particular field. The jobs are listed along the bottom here, okay? So these are the jobs. This is how much someone in that career makes in $20,000 increments average annually. You'll see this is a little old, so these numbers are likely higher now. But I believe the relative relationships may, are the same, okay? So we will just go with this because I like this graph even though it's a little tricky. The pink or purple I'm not sure what color that is, but these are kind of gender-associated bars here, are how much women in that particular field make, okay? So if we look at, let's look at nurses. Where are nurses? Registered nurses. Registered nurses, which requires a four-year degree, right? We see that male nurses, on average, are making, let's go over, $80,000 a year, and women nurses, female nurses, are making slightly less than that. Okay, this is interesting because there are more uh, female nurses than male nurses. So it's kind of counterintuitive that they would be making less than men. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, men's pay, women's pay, 
the black dot here scales over to the right. Okay, the black dot scales over to the right, and what that is indicating is the percentage of women's pay compared to men's pay in that field. Okay, so what you'll see is on average, male nurses make more than female nurses, and the pay gap for nurses, the gender pay gap, is about 85% because that scales over here. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, please send me an email or give me a call. Okay, this is important to understand. So the black dots represent the percentage of women's pay that men make in that particular field. Now we're controlling for jobs, so that should control a little bit for differences overall between men and women and how much education they have and what kind of jobs they do. But we still see what, folks? We still see a pretty significant gender pay gap. If there were no gender pay gap by occupation, we would still see differences in pay between, say, doctors and middle school teachers, right? That makes sense because doctors have to get more education on average, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but if there were no gender pay gap, there would not be black dots. There would be a black line here at 100% because women and men in those fields would be making roughly the same as one another. Instead, what we see is that in most of these job categories, if we look at the 100% where I'm tracing the little cursor here, women make less than men, which is what is accounting to some extent for that pay gap. In two particular categories, you see women making more than men, human resources workers and first-line supervisors of non-retail sales. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but per the... Um, uh, it's it's like a Bureau of Labor Statistics category. Per that category, per that category, excuse me, we see women making a little more than average or than men on average. Okay, this is also I want to point out controlling for how much people work. So this is people working quite a bit actually, 50 hours per week for more than 50 weeks a year. So this is full time, maybe more than full time work. So in other words. What we're, what we're sort of controlling for here is the tendency for women, especially women who have children, to work part-time compared to men who are more likely to work full-time. So we're controlling here for occupation, and we're controlling for um, how much people work. Those controls are not part of this overall statistic, but you should still know this because it still represents gender stratification. Okay, folks, the question I have for you is why? Why, if we control for kind of job and how much people work, do we still see a pay gap? And why do we see this issue here where doctors, right? One of the high, this is medical doctors, by the way, not PhDs, although it holds true, not quite as disparate, but it holds true for PhDs, that whole bit about the more education you have, the worse the pay gap is. Why, folks, do we see doctors who are men making twice as much as doctors who are women? Same amount of education, possibly. Same um, training. Same experience. Why is this happening? Well, the answer to that question is complicated, and it absolutely has to do with gender and gender roles. Within this category of doctors, it's still a little bit of an apples to oranges comparison. In other words, this category is too gross to reflect specific comparisons still because there's different kinds of doctors. And guess what? Your gender is associated with, not causal, but it is associated with the kind of specialty you might go into as a doctor, which leads to, you guessed it, pay differences. So men who are going into medical school and beyond are more likely to major or specialize in surgery, neurology, those highly paid specialties. Women are more likely, who are going to med school and beyond, are more likely to specialize in those lower paid, quote unquote, lower paid fields like OBGYN and family practice. Okay, The same thing, unfortunately, is true in nursing. Nurses who are men are more likely to specialize in those higher paid subspecialties like OR, ER, ICU nurse, okay? 
and women who are nurses are more likely to go into those slightly lower paid specialties. The question is, again, to back up and to be really careful social thinkers, why? Why do women, quote unquote, choose lower paying fields than men? And you'll note I'm putting choice in air quotes. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to talk about this a little bit, this association with educational attainment and gender pay gap. So you can see here, if I include how much education someone has, that as you get higher levels of degree, um, women make, it, it's less equal between men, men and women, as I said earlier, okay? Um, again, this has to do with what fields people go into. So these are the reasons, these are kind of unpacking some of the myths about the gender pay gap, and then we'll go into the specific reasons why we have it, okay? So first of all, it is not the case, it is not the case that boys are better at math and science, at least not initially. What happens is, what we see is girls and boys are equally good at this, and this data I think might be a little old as well. Girls and boys are equally good at math and reading, but then there's a socialization effect where girls are um, encouraged and positively sanctioned and rewarded for reading, and boys are encouraged to go into math and science. Okay, And it is not the case that men are more educated than women. Women actually earn, on average, more degrees. Right here is the average than men. The problem is women are not going into the higher paid fields at the same rate as men. Women are getting only about a quarter of all STEM degrees, science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay, So this is likely a big part of that overall gender pay gap. Right, Women who get a college degree are more likely to major in teaching or nursing or um, English or psychology or sociology, and men are more likely to major in engineering. Guess which one gets paid more? Engineering, right? Or computer science, okay? But even when women go into these STEM careers, they are still seeing a pay gap. Even with the same degree, same amount of experience, that, my friends, is straight up sexism, okay? So here are um, the quote unquote official explanations for the pay gap, but I want to think about these a little bit, okay? Women um, choose, in big old air quotes, fields with lower earnings. I want you to think about why, if we have two students in medical school, right, a man and a woman, they've gone to college, they've gone through medical school, and now they're choosing what specialty to go into. Think about how old you are at that age. You're probably late 20s, early 30s. What else is happening at that time in your life course? Well, you're likely finding a partner and getting married and maybe thinking about having a family, okay? If you are the person in that partnership um, with the uterus or with a female identity, you have likely been socialized to uh, think that children and childbearing and marriage are your responsibility, right? So it's a socialization effect, whereas men have been socialized into thinking they're the provider, they've got to make the higher salary, right? So then when we think back about our doctor couple, right, who possibly are married to one another, one's a man, one's a woman, and they're thinking about what specialty to go into, and they're in their 30s, and they want to have a family, it makes sort of rational, logical sense within that pair that perhaps the woman would choose to go into family medicine or a less um, intensive specialization that does not involve many more years of residency and, and more expense, whereas the man might go into that higher paying field because of the pressures of feeling like he has to be the breadwinner. Okay, So in that case, sure, those individuals are choosing that, but that choice is constrained by gender role socialization by the pay gap itself, right? Because it makes rational sense that the person who makes more money is not going to stay home with the children, right? The person who makes more money is going to go work, and the person who makes less money is going to take that pay cut and stay home with the kids. That's just, it seems rational, but it's not without the gendered 
um, the gendered pattern here, and it re-contributes to that pattern. Okay, so if you don't follow all of that, just think about how gender as a system, as a stratification system, affects individual choices. That's what I really want you to think about, and thinking about that particular chart we looked at. Okay, women get stuck under a glass ceiling. What this what this is referring to, the glass ceiling, is the concept that if women and men enter the workforce, women are less likely to be promoted to upper level positions. That's that glass ceiling. And they see um, their colleagues who are men, and particularly white men, getting promoted over others. Okay, that's the glass ceiling. Mothers are more likely than fathers to make work adjustments for children. What this means is that... Um, Women are more likely than men to take time off to have children since we don't have great parental leave policies in this country. Um, and they're more likely to work part-time. And that accounts for a large part of that overall pay gap is, remember I said it was um, women, all women working and all men working. And then I mentioned that women are more likely to work part-time, especially women with children. Um, because daycare, if you have priced it, you know it's extremely expensive, extremely expensive. And in some cases, it doesn't even make sense to work if you've got, you know, two kids who would require daycare. That might be more than what you could possibly make, okay? So you are much more likely to cut back your hours to part-time if you're the person making less money than the person making more money. Where this gets interesting, by the way, and in my family class, we look at um, same-sex couples, right? Do we see a similar pattern if we don't have this sort of gendered hierarchy to fall back on? And the answer is, it's complicated. Um, so essentially in same-sex same couples, excuse me, the with when you don't have like an opposite sex pair where you like are falling back on those gender role expectations, you see that the person who makes more money um, tends to do less of the child care and housework, and the person who makes less money tends to do more of that, but it sort of depends on the couple. So it's a little bit more nuanced. Um, okay, given all of that, even when we control for all of these variables, there is still a 41% gap that we cannot explain between men and women's overall salary, and that is the result, we, we would say, of straight-up sex discrimination or sexism. Okay, make sure you know and understand these rules. Make sure you know that it is not about girls being bad at math or science. It's absolutely not that. If I've said it twice, it's probably going to be an exam question. Okay. So why do we see that difference um, between girls and boys eventually? It's probably a Pygmalion effect, which is a basically a self-fulfilling prophecy where different um, genders are rewarded differently for different capacities. Um, this gets a lot more complicated. I will, I will hold off on going into all those studies right now to just get us through kind of the basics here. Uh, unfortunately, textbooks and other materials often reinforce gender stereotypes in the same way that they reinforce racial ethnic group stereotypes so that girls internalize the message that girls should be um, beautiful and maybe good at writing and reading, but not they don't have to be good at math or science, okay? That that's not for them. To wrap up this part of our content, I want to add in a perspective called intersectionality. Intersectionality, I may include a little mini a uh, lesson about this because it is a really important concept. Intersectionality refers to the idea that it is the intersections of our individual identities that produce privilege and oppression, and not just one identity at a time that shapes our social experience of being in a particular location. Okay, So in other words, we, we can't just look at gender. We need to uh, compare how race and ethnicity and gender and class affect someone's experience, okay? So the way to really understand this is um, if I am a woman of color compared to a white woman, I have a very different experience in the social world. And if I am a man of color 
compared to a white man, I have a very different experience. That's the idea here of intersectionality. So one way to explore this is to have another look at the gender pay gap, but now I'm going to add in race and ethnicity and try to understand this, okay? Uh, the Remember the overall statistic you should remember if I'm just looking at men and women is men are making a dollar, women are making 81 cents. This data is slight from a slightly different calculation, so don't get confused, it's 81 cents. But what I want you to look at, it's this other chart. What this is showing you is now when I add race and ethnicity and I compare men and women, I see a different picture, okay? So if this is our white men, Asian Americans uh, men are actually making more on average than white men. Asian American women are doing better than white women, but not as good as white men, okay? So if we look at this, we can see that that gap between um, women and men is different depending on your race or ethnic group identity, okay? So it's important to think about that. So if white men are making a dollar, white women are making 77 cents on average, um, I think this is African American women are making 64 cents compared to the white man now and Hispanic women are making 56 cents. So that pay gap gets much worse or more extreme if we add in race or ethnicity, unless you are an Asian American person. And this is an average. Again, of course, these are not individual representations, okay? So if you have questions about that, please ask, but really what I wanted you to understand was that we need to also consider other identities in this picture. I'm going to pause here and then we will finish up with sexual orientation and maybe a little bit more on intersectionality to finish out this chapter. Thanks.